everybody. Let's just continue. So the last time we used change directory command and there is a there are a few tricks to it. One of them is basically using this markation. So if I type in this and if I press enter, okay, I'm already in that directory. But let's say that I was in root boot grub to I don't know, whatever. Unless yep, I am there. Anyway, how would I get back to my home directory where my username is? What would I do? What would I need to type in? Well, one of the first things that comes to mind is cd slash home slash random guy and I would be there. And if I want to go to the downloads folder, I would have to type in down, downloads. So this whole command would, I would need to type in in order to go back to my home directory. Is there a shorter way? Yes. So basically there is a shortcut. I know it doesn't seem too significant here but when you are deep somewhere in the system, deep on the file tree, uh, typing in these commands to go back and forth can be a tedious task and knowing these shortcuts can help you a great deal to well basically preserve your nerves and save time. So just type in tilde, there you go, slash, and if I type in downloads, there you go. I'm going to go straight into the downloads folder from here, or I could just type in uh, this, there you go, if I type in pwd, I indeed am in my home directory of the current user. Keep in mind that the cd tilde will only take you to the current home directory of uh, sorry, not to the current home directory, there is no such thing, uh, to the home directory of the current user. So it won't take you to the, if you, for example, had, let's go back a step, let's do an ls. So this is my user, but you can have practically an infinite amount of users here. And if I typed in cd tilde, it would take me back, it would basically take me back only to this uh, to this folder as that is my current user name. This is my host name. So this is the host name here and this is my username just so you know what is signified here and this is my current directory so to say the entire path is not listed but the current one the current the name of the current directory is which is very very nice. Let's go ahead and clear the screen and let's go back to the ls command. Now ls command has a large amount of arguments. So what are arguments to commands? Basically it's an additional instruction that you give a, a, to a command which modifies the way that particular command behaves. So if I just type in ls, oh well, let's change the directory to root because I'm going to have more stuff to list there. And if I type in ls here, Okay, so you see what happens? I get a list of directories in this fashion, but that's that's about it. I get a list of not just directories, I get a list of everything that is within this directory, which is root. But so what? It doesn't tell me any information. It doesn't tell me the size. It doesn't tell me the last date when it was modified. It doesn't give me the permission. It doesn't give me the ownership. Nothing. Okay, let's try to change that. Let's type in ls space dash l. So this L dash L is an argument to a command which will modify its behavior. Press enter and there you go. You can see how this particular listing, oops, sorry, this particular listing is completely different from this listing. Why? Well, the lower listing or the later, the later listing uh, is far more verbose in comparison to the first one. It gives you a lot more information and it's really useful. So this is the basically the owner, this is the ownership group, si ups, size, last date when it date last date when it was modified. Uh, the, now how do you know is this a directory or is this a text file or something of a kind or is this a file or a directory or whatever. So it says here basically the first letter it says directory D. The first letter L. It's a link. Do we have anything that's not a link or directory here? I'm afraid we do not. Let's go into var ls shell. Do we have anything here? Nope. Log. There's bound to be something here. And there we go. So if it's just a dash, 
basically like this uh, it says secure then you can go ahead and open it it's basically a text file it's basically a file it not, doesn't necessarily have to be a text file everything is a file in Linux but it's not a directory which contains other files let's put it so uh, let's open it up there is another command which you can use it's called less I think I shall speak more about text editing commands and text display uh, and the commands which you can use for test displaying but here I just want to demonstrate how you can confirm uh, that indeed it is not a directory rather in oops not Samba secure and instead it's oops what does it say permission denied hmm what could that be what could the reason be it doesn't actually allow us to list the contents of the secure file of the file named secure what is the problem well let's take a look the owner of this file is root root group that is and the root user because the, this column here it tells you who the who the owner is which user is the owner and this colon here actually tells you uh, to which group which group does own that file two different things let me just explain this further to you let's say that a company has a Linux system running and that you have within that company management department management department and you have accounting department so there will be users in accounting department which would belong to an accounting group and there will be users in the management department that would belong to management group so you would have I don't know Kevin Smith who belongs where it says root here you would have I don't know Kevin Smith that belongs to the group accounting you also have this group which I am displaying here which is root that is fundamentally for control of all things on the system roots root is the pretty much is almighty there is nothing that is beyond the grasp of root anyway let's just go ahead and clear the screen here as I said I will deal later on more with text editing commands and how you can create files edit them and less for the time being I just want to show you the LS and explain it further so LS dash L H and a Excellent. So what has changed? What can you notice that has changed in the output of this file? It says 4 kilobytes. Uh, 4 kilobytes again. 12 kilobytes. These files are pretty small. There's nothing in megabytes here to show, but it doesn't matter. This is basically a human readable format of file sizes. Look at the difference. Just Okay, so how, how easy is it to read this? Uh, you have to compute basically to figure out the file size I mean you know it's pretty small here so you can say it's four kilobytes but I mean imagine if it was imagine if four if I don't know 4.5 gigabytes were represented in kilobytes that would be hilarious because you would have a huge number here and you would basically need to compute how much is that in gigabytes which is absurd rather instead you can just add h to the ls command the argument h and you will immediately get the file sizes for pretty much all the file here one more thing uh, you have a which enables you to list pretty much everything that there are no hit if there are some hidden folders they will be listed rest assured uh, you can also say that it omits these two if you want but that's that's not a big deal uh, rather instead this is your current directory it represents your current directory and this one it represents your it represents the directory which precedes this one so dot and double dot I've shown that with the CD command anyway let's go ahead and clear the screen now and type in ls space dash dash help this is a universal way to get more information on what a particular command does and what sort of arguments can you actually pass to that command you can also try typing in dash h but that's not going to work for ls you see it just prints things uh, rather instead just type in dash dash help most of the commands will accept dash h but dash dash help will be is more universal let's put it so if i press enter i don't have a listing of the current directory rather instead i have a help menu which pretty much 
gives me the list of all arguments. It tells me what each of those arguments does and on top, let me just show you, on the top it gives me the example of usage. Very nice, right? So ls and then I pass in the option which is one of the arguments below and you might notice that there is also a file here. So what could this mean? Let's have a look. But before we do, uh, I would strongly recommend to all of you, these are these things are pretty simple, uh, just feel free to read through this through some of them, you don't have to read through all of them. The, the ones that you will be using on daily basis will be the A, uh, hold on, the dash H of course, it's, oops, the dash H which is right here. Also you have the long version of the argument, so instead of dash h you can also pass this long version of it, but I don't think that there is ever a need for such things. Uh, it doesn't act to not print group names to shorten the output if you want. Okay, so what else are we going to need? Let's see if there's anything else. Ignore pattern different. There is, there is definitely something. Ah, th there we go. I knew I was looking for something that I wanted. Uh, dash R. It's basically recursive. So list subdirectories recursively. Now we're going to try to use that as it's going to come quite in handy. Look at what I'm going to do. So clear. If I type in from here ls tilde slash home. Uh, sorry, I don't need home. I'm already there. Uh, let's go to downloads. Yep, there we go. Downloads. And there is n literally nothing there. Okay, forget about that. Let's go ls, uh, just of the root directory, and then type in var. Okay, so I have just told it to list the, co the contents of the directory var. Press enter, there we go. Even though my current working directory is var log, I have stated that I want the directory to be list that some directory uh, should be the contents of some directory should be listed. So here you can actually specify a path direct to the directory you wish to see. So you can see the contents of any directory on the system from any location on the system as long as you have the proper permissions to do so. Let's try something else. Let's try ls. Uh, dash r slash boot. This uh, this is going to give you a lot of information. Ups, 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 ups. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ls, ls. Uh, should be around here somewhere. There we go. So there we go. Ls space dash r for recursive output. Space path to the file. Path to the directory. The first thing that it does, it gives me the listing of slash boot. Second thing that it does, it gives me the listing of slash boot grub2. And then it shows me what is in that directory. And then you see uh, grub, the directory grub2 has a subdirectory of fonts. The next thing it does, it does boot grub2 and then fonts. And then it shows me the listing of that particular directory and so on and so forth into as long as there are subdirectories to the current directories. It shows the entire listing of pretty much everything, a fantastic way to go about things and you are able to see pretty much anything anywhere. Anyway, I shall call the tutorial here and then we will continue in the follow-up.